In this tutorial, we will learn how to do the famous egg churn. There's two tutorials for this. There's one, this one, the simplest one, and then a second one, which is more complicated, which adds more interior detail, like cushions and so on around the edges and back of the chair. So, open up a new design, as always. Select the sketch tool and we're going to draw an egg like a shape. Draw a circle of diameter 900 millimeters. This is the maximum diameter across the width of the egg chair. Then draw a straight line from the center to the edge. From there, draw a line up any length. The angle has to be 135 if measuring from this line. So 135. Any length, just drag it out like this. Doesn't really matter, you can make it 500 if you want. And then click Escape and another line from here. Again, 500 if you want, but make sure the angle is 135 again. So that between here you have 90 degrees. And then what you do, choose the circle tool again. We shall go to the side of the circle here and click and drag another circle across to this point. From here again, across to here. So what we have here is two points where we can draw an arc between from this centre. So again, using the circle, draw out another circle until it meets the intersection of these two lines. And can you see the egg? So you have to delete some lines. Delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. Bottom, so start from the outside, then move inside. You will get messages saying, warning, don't worry about that. That is the best way to draw an egg shape. Okay. Use the line tool and draw a line down through the middle. So we actually only need half the egg to make the egg shape. So delete lever half. From here, we will use the offset tool. So click on the offset tool. Select the edges, and that's it. We want to make a offset of 10 mil on the inside. So flip and the inside. Click OK. And now we shall draw the base of the egg on the inside, where the people will actually sit on. So. Let's just draw a straight line across from here. Um, we can use the dimension tool to measure. And we can make it about 175. These are roughly the correct proportions of the real egg chart. And we can now delete the lines we no longer want. So we don't want that line. We don't want this line. So that's the shape we want. Again, sometimes these dimensions can just visually become a bit disturbing, so are annoying, so just delete them. That's the shape we want. So we are now ready to revolve. So finish the sketch and let's revolve this sketch. Actually, before we do it, we will create the stem that comes down here into the bottom bit. We still have to make the bottom bit, we'll do that later. But we'll add a stem to the bottom of the egg. So let's go back into the sketches, and right click and edit the sketch. So let's draw straight down, about a length of 150. Remember to use shortcuts. L for line. Enter a distance of 50 across at 90 degrees, and then 
another line straight up into the shape above. Press escape. We'll use the trim tool again. And we're left with this stem. I would also just add an extra little drawing like this. It's a rectangle. We'll just draw it over so it overlaps here. If you can see what I'm doing. Make it about 70 long, 25 high. And then we can again trim the lines we no longer want. So we have this sort of shape. Let's just check these dimensions. Yeah, make it up at 15. And that should be about 20. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so finish the sketch. Now we're going to revolve this sketch. So click on the revolve feature. You want to select the profile first. So select the profile, then choose axis and choose a central axis. And you'll see it will revolve into a solid egg shape. It's not solid, but because we've done this edgy, yeah? so the inside is actually hollow. This is the best way to create this shape. Make sure it's new body. When we get to this stage, what we need to do is to be able to see the lines inside. So we can go to visual display and use wireframe. It's just disappeared off your screen here, but in the sub menu, if you scroll down, there's an option called wireframe to so get this. Now what I would do is make another sketch. So sketch tool onto the same work plane. Just roll in, go to the top, make sure it's in the middle. So just go to the bottom and draw out the guiding line. Make sure you've got to the top. Even just slightly past it. That's about right. I'm going to draw a line. You have to use the roller ball here to push the object down so you can see what you're drawing to. I want it to come across here like that. Draw the line to outside the shape and bring it round like that. And finish the sketch. So let's go back now and see the visual display and click on shade it. So I can see, if I just turn it for you, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm adding a sketch in the middle. Remember, it's hollow inside. So what I'm going to do now is extrude this sketch. I'm going to extrude it symmetrically. And I'm going to put it out like that. And make sure it's cut. And when I click OK, you should now see what I'm doing. You can now see the inside of the egg shaped chair. Okay. Let's leave that for a minute. And what we shall do now is go back down here and create the second part, the base of the chair, which this part sits down into. So again, this is a simplification of the joint down here, but it shows the principle and teaches you the skills in the software. So again, add sketch to the same work plane. Again, if you haven't got a mouse with a rollerball, get one. So select the line tool and we shall start here. Or yeah, let's draw a line out to this edge. So you're following down here, cross to the middle, which should be 50, then down, about a distance of, again you can choose, but I would say a distance of about 75, something like that. Press L for line again, if you lose the, the line tool, press L, and straight across, let's just see what I'm doing, straight across and 90 degrees to this line, so you're looking for this little 90 degree indicator, bring it across to say 350. Then I'm going to press L2 again, just bring it up, small distance, 20 mil. So you've got line here, line down the edge of this, line here, line here, across to here. So I'm going to do, so I could just draw a straight line across here, but I'm going to do something a bit different to get a nice curve from here to here. I'm going to use an ellipse tool. So use ellipse, go down to the edge without clicking, just draw a straight line up 
and you'll see it gives you these blue dashed lines, which is guiding lines. Go across to this point and draw back from here as well, and you should get the intersecting lines appear like this. Click once, go back over to this point, you'll see a grey dashed line appear. Click once and then go down, so you can see now you're opening the ellipse. Bring it back down to this point. So now, can you see what I'm doing? Creating this nice curve from here to here. So use the trim tool and delete this. What I'm going to do over here as well is make a little bit of a space. In reality, they would have some sort of clearance space of a millimeter or so between these two parts. So I'm going to use the offset tool. Choose that, choose that, and choose that bottom piece. And you'll see it gives you a line one millimeter away, which is fine. So we now want to use a trim tool and we want to delete some of these lines which we don't want. Again, you will get these messages, warnings coming up. It should be fine, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, when I try to delete this line, this isn't quite intersecting, so I can't delete just this little part. It tries to delete the whole line. So what I need to do is just press escape to come out of the trim tool, click on the bottom of this line and just drag it further out, straight line, and then trim that and that. And that's that. So now I finish that sketch and we shall revolve again. And so we've selected, the profile selected, the axis is this, and it revolves. Make sure it's a new body, please. Don't click on join. Make sure it's a new body every time. So now we have the shape. So it's pretty cool. Uh, what I would do now, let's think, I would go underneath and I would actually shell it. This would be an injection molded piece of plastic, probably this base. So it's made quite thick, it has to be quite strong, 10 mil wall thickness. And it would look something like that, maybe underneath. So click OK. Uh, what we can also do now is add in another part in here, like a cushion to sit on. So just click on Extrude, go inside, and you'll see it selects that surface, that circular surface, which is already there, and you can extrude that. So let's make it just what's visible, say 60. And again, let's make it a new body. Click OK. If I zoom in here, obviously cushions have nice round edges. So let's make that 30. Yeah, looks okay. Click OK. And that is pretty much it. What you can do, you've got these bodies. Now you've got the first body, which is this part, the second, which is the base, and the third part. What I would probably do is group these together, body one and body three. So we'll go to modify and we can combine them and we can make a new component. So here we have both those parts joined together now. It still leaves, right, and then right click on the body and click on create. So that's the bottom part and this part is now two components. It leaves over a body here. You don't really need it, so right click and remove it. So now you have these two parts. You'll see now if you click and drag on them, they come apart. So what we can do here is use the assembly tool for joint, capture position, go to the bottom of it, click on this. Uh, we want to make sure it's a revolute, not a rigid, so it's a revolute, so we can turn the top piece around the bottom piece. Let's have a look at the bottom of here. Um, we're looking to get the next part. Oh, let me select that, so I'm just going to come out of it and go back into it. Capture position. There you go. Make sure it's a select. Selecting the bottom of that hole and it comes together. Okay. If you wanted to, you could move it slightly further apart here. Make that gap a little bit more noticeable if you wanted to, so there's more clearance. But that's up to you. It doesn't really matter. And again, just check it's a Revolut. Click OK. And when you want to move it, it will still move both parts. What you have to do is select this base piece, 
by clicking over here, right click and round it. Capture position. Now when you click on this, you should be able to rotate. So it looks like the real thing. 